Hey everyone, and welcome to my Nikkei Goddess of Victory training series. In this first episode, we will go over everything you need to know about the combat system in the game, things you need to know including many types of weapons, how to properly build teams, and other important information related to combat. If you find any of this useful, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's get started. First up, we'll go over the important character details that you need to know. Each character in Nikkei has a different weapon type, burst type, and element. The characters in the game can have one of the six different weapon types in Nikkei. You have the Assault Rifle, SMG, Minigun, Rocket Launcher, Shotgun, and Sniper Rifle. The key difference you need to know about these weapons are their effective range values. Every weapon's range value can go between 0 to 100%. 0 being the closest range, and 100 being the farthest. Hitting an enemy outside of a weapon's effective range will result in less damage or efficiency. A quick overview for each weapon's effective range is that assault rifles and miniguns are generally considered the all-around weapons in Nikkei. Assault rifles have a 25-45% to range value and miniguns have 35-55%. to Shotguns and SMGs are your best options for close range combat. Shotguns have a 0-25% to effective range value and SMGs have a 15-35%. to So this is good for situations when you are up against enemies up close. Sniper rifles, on the other hand, have a 45-100% to effective range. So this is needed for when you have enemies extremely far away. And then you also have the rocket launcher, which has no range restrictions, dealing the same damage regardless of how far the enemy is. Another important thing to keep in mind about the characters is their burst type. They can either be a burst type 1, 2, or 3. The character's burst type is indicated by a Roman numeral on their character icon and this indicates which phase of the burst meter they can use their burst. So how does a character's burst type affect you in battle? In Nikkei, you have a burst meter that will slowly charge up as you defeat enemies in battle. Once it is full, you can use the character's burst skill, but there's one thing to take note about. Only characters with the appropriate burst type can use their skill during each of the three phases of the burst meter. Another thing to keep in mind is that the burst phase won't continue to the next one if you don't use a skill of the right type during it. In order to advance to a full burst, which begins after you use a skill during the third phase, you need to assemble a team that includes all three burst types. Each burst skill also has a 40 or 20 second cooldown depending on the character. So having a 20 second cooldown is crucial for burst 1 and 2 characters since it makes it possible for you to use full burst more frequently. Another part of the character's kit is their element. Each character can be one of five elements in Nikkei. You have fire, water, electric, wind, and iron. However, a character's element is not as significant as their burst type or weapon type because this only gives you a 10% damage increase if you are using the recommended element for different stages. But you don't necessarily put yourself at a disadvantage if you don't do so. Now let's talk about character formations. You can enter a stage with up to 5 characters, and if you plan to use the auto skill option, you must set up your team correctly. When you use the auto skill mode, you are basically making the AI use the character's burst for you. And how this AI works is that it will scan your formation from left to right, looking for characters that are classified as burst 1 since they initiate the burst. But the AI will use the next character with the same burst type if the first character scanned is on cooldown, stunned, or dead. And the AI will then scan for characters of other burst types once you fill up your burst meter accordingly. Auto skill is useless if your team doesn't have any burst 1 characters. This makes it necessary for your team to include at least one member of each burst type. Otherwise, you would never be able to enter full burst mode. Now that we know all of this, this is how you apply it in the game. Before you enter the stage, a menu will pop up showing you a lot of valuable information that can help you complete the stage. On the top left corner, you have the stage number and underneath that, you have the enemy's weak point. The character using the element shown will receive a 10% damage bonus. And beside the weak point, you have the effective range. This shows the percentage of the total number of enemies spawning in different ranges. For this particular stage, 38% of the enemies will spawn up close, 62% will spawn at mid-range, and 0% will spawn far away. Knowing how far the enemies are is very important, especially in later stages. So you can form your team accordingly to increase your chances of clearing the stage. Moving on to the right side of the menu, you will see the recommended power level for the stage. You will also see your current power level to let you know if your characters are capable of clearing the stage. 
During the closed beta test, I was able to push a few stages beyond my power level. But it became extremely difficult just after a few levels. So make sure to upgrade your characters to the best you can so you can have a better chance of pushing through more stages. Now going back to the menu. You can also quickly switch between your pre-made teams. So as you progress into the game and get more characters, it's important that you form different teams for different scenarios. It's possible to make a one-size-fits-all type of team, but this can be expensive since most of the best units are SSRs. So realistically, you will have to form at least 3 different teams for different stages which consist of both SR and SSR characters. You will need one team for a close-ranged focused stage, one team for mid-range, and one for a stage that has most of the enemies spawning far away. You can form up to 5 pre-made teams so you can really experiment and see which team works best for you depending on the characters you have. And next up, how does the gameplay work in Nikkei? Nikkei is mainly built for a one-handed mobile phone gameplay experience but depending on the weapon type your character uses, you will either have to tap and hold to shoot or you will have to tap and hold to aim and shoot by letting go. There are a lot of options to help you in playing this game. Features like the auto fire system and aim assist. It is pretty simple to get the hang of it personally. It's actually one of the more fun casual gameplay experiences I have had recently. So yeah, that is everything for episode 1 of my Nikkei Goddess of Victory training series. We went over the things you need to know about the game's combat system, so I hope everything was clear and helpful. Some of it might seem a bit complicated, but trust me, it's going to be a walk in the park, and I really think you will enjoy the combat in this game. Stay tuned for more episodes about the other aspects of Nikkei. I will be uploading more videos as we get closer to the release day. Make sure to pre-register for the game if you haven't done so already, so you don't miss out on the free rewards including a free SSR. With all that being said, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.